<laughs> Thanks for joining us on Living It Up, Making Life Juicy. I'm Ingrid Guthrie, and my guest, this is part two, Deborah Collier. <laughs> if you want to say it the French, Collier, you can. I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> it's Deborah Collier. And she wrote this incredible book, The Psychic Next Door, which I could not put down, and I was just so fascinated by it. And Thank your you. story, yeah, yeah. Which, of course, you can find this on Amazon. But, um... So you're you're a card reader, correct? Psychic medium, card reader. Good. Yes. And um, you can you can folks out there you can watch part one. That's on YouTube. Look for Living It Up, Making Life Juicy with Deborah Collier and Ingrid. And uh, so you're gonna do you're just you're not gonna do a reading because like last, a sample reading. Okay. We'll do like a. Okay. And then just explain how you do this. You've been doing it for how long? Uh, 40 years, 38 plus years, a long time. And I teach tarot. Yeah. Um, I worked at many institutions, and now I teach privately here in my home in Vermont. Okay. So, um, and we'll be starting a class next week. I can't wait! Next week! <laughs> and what we'll cover is a little bit of the history, um, all the cards, majors, minors, and we start with the Rider Waite deck because all the others are based off of this deck. So that's awesome. the Rider Waite deck that we'll use. Good. Um, I'm just going to, gonna, mine. yeah, I'll explain just a little bit about the readings and how it works for me. I can't speak for other readers, only myself. Right. But the way I receive information or channel and how I prepare. Great. Um, so preparing, basically, I shuffle the cards first because it's telling that part of my brain that I'm getting ready to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's, that has to happen for me as well. I do like all the senses involved, the music. I like clary sage oil, which I have. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> I like clary sage oil as the scent to be present. Some people like lavender. You know, the oils nice. are so popular yeah, today. Yeah. But I like something that's relaxing for me and relaxing for the client. Uh -huh. So between the, the scent and the sounds, and not crossing arms or legs. We want to be nice and relaxed, like an open channel, so information can come in and go through. Great. Um, care of the cards when you get a new deck of cards. Some people sleep with them under their pillows. Some people smudge them. Um, you can put them. You can smudge them with sage. There's a number of different ways to take them out of the pack, and they're so new, and you think there's no information, but it's all in there. Yeah. So, that's the fun so part, cool. is care of the cards. I don't let anyone disrespect my cards, but anyone can touch them and play with them. I have no problem with that. Okay. Um, so I start with the shuffling. I read the cards as they fall. When I teach tarot, I teach to read them in the upright position or to turn them so they're in the upright position. Okay. Because there's already 78 cards and meanings. So think about if we have to alter the reverse. Right, right. That would be, yes, that would be advanced tarot. Some <laughs> people will only read them right side up, and other people will feel a need to read reverse, and they want to learn that. So that's on an individual basis. Yeah. For me, when they were upside down, I'm like, I can't turn it. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay. So everyone develops their own way yeah. and style when they learn, and we'll cover that in the class as well. So the, the shuffling, there's no set time to shuffle the cards of when to stop. You feel when to stop. It's something you just feel. And if you're not ready or I'm with a client and I think they're too nervous, mm -hmm. you know, they're too stressed or I want them to relax, I sometimes shuffle a little longer. Okay. But I won't ask them any questions because I want to read them like a blank slate. Okay. So... After I feel as though I've shuffled, I can ask the client to either cut the cards or shuffle the cards. Okay. It is important they touch them. I do get clients who say, you do it, I don't want to touch them. And I say, well, I need you in here, mixed in right. here in your energy. Yeah. It's almost like giving permission to read them. Now, when you do phone readings or you Skype, then I do have to pick them. Mm -hmm. But I prefer to be face-to-face. -face. Yeah. It does work the other way, but there's nothing like face-to-face -to, -face to right, do a reading. True. Or we'll say energy to energy. She's got great energy, doesn't she? <laughs> I do like and it, it becomes twofold when you come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So she just did the cut. Um, I'll do, I don't know how to shuffle. <laughs> and most people don't. 
And sometimes when they shuffle, cards will fly out on the floor and they get very upset. And I tell them, don't get upset. They're meaningful. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> I call them jumpers. That happened. That's, That's what time. happened. Yes. That's what happened. Oh, my goodness. Last time we had some jumpers and uh, I pay attention to them and we can still put them back in the deck. I think instead of doing um, the 11 card spread, that's a large spread, we could pick a question and, you know, choose three cards. And that can be like a past, present, future. That's how we start when we teach because it's a little overwhelming to learn mm -hmm. all the cards. Right. And even if people don't feel they're psychic, they can still learn the cards. Yeah. That's like learning how to drive a car through manuals and then, okay, I memorized all these things in the manual, now I just have to drive the car. And then in doing readings for friends to just start out and play with, that's mm -hmm. when you develop the psychic ability or connect to the higher self and you can automatically feel things just by looking at one card. That happens, that changeover Love will happen. It. When we Good. do the class, we'll memorize in the beginning and then we'll do ways to stimulate intuition. Super. So we'll work on that in the second half. Excellent. But it's really great in class because regardless of people who have an aptitude or not, there's this energy that happens when people get together and they're excited about something. Okay. It's like amazing. And it's strong. You almost feel things happen. If we get Excellent. into mediumship, because you're like an open channel, I've mm -hmm. seen the lights blink, go off. The strangest things happen in that group energy. It's really fun. Nice. Yes, it's really fun. And then people will develop in their talent. Wow, when I read cards, it's always about love. Or when I read cards, it's like I'm a nurse. It's always health. You develop your own area that is your birthmark. Fascinating. I'm it's, curious. Okay. Yeah, so it, everyone could have a different way. Some readers can see everything or when you ask the question, then we can be specific. Okay. So it's kind of cool. So okay. we can think about even a question that uh, we could answer publicly, or it could be about nature, the universe. It could be about uh, people who aren't going to stay away from religion and, right. and, and politics. politics. <laughs> no politics. No politics. Yeah. We're, we're going to stay away from that. Although I, many people ask me about scores for games and and fantasy football and trump and they ask everything okay. and i will answer for them but that yeah. does not reflect my opinion the cards never reflect my opinion yeah, right it's right. for the person the client and i channel the answer and they can so like it or not like it yeah but if they ask then you know right. we'll see so it's all about the question I so came unprepared. <laughs> well, then let's say, is there anything for Ingrid that's for the highest good? Okay. Highest good would mean any opportunity, okay. any any avenues or roads that you should choose. Okay. I, I like mean, that. I know a little bit about what you do, but I don't know mm -hmm. everything. Right. So cut it into three piles. Just make it like a one, two, three. Okay. Of course, we know this is entertainment purposes only, but the cards are pretty amazing. <laughs> That was a good little disclaimer. I like that. We have to have the disclaimer. So, we pick three cards. Oh, fantastic. This was, okay, so the fantastic. last time we did this, the camera was not recording for some reason, even though I, like, triple checked it. <laughs> and the card reading that she did was just so beautiful and so Thank amazing you. and filled with light and love. And it was. And you got that again. <laughs> I, I see that. You it was got that like, again. Beautiful sky blues and yellows. And yellow is my favorite color. So, and that's the intellect. Yes, yes, okay. because all the tarot cards, the colors are meaningful. Not just what's in the photograph or the picture or the painting of the card. Mm -hmm. All the blues are peaceful, a little bit like the auras. All the yellow is the intellect. So that's why you like yellow. You're an intellect person. <laughs> you like to you like to shift people's consciousness. Oh, you do. I, I do. You I enjoy do. learning and yeah. yes. So that's why you're a yellow. Okay. Reds can be like passion, anger, power. Okay. It kind of depends. So, and there are male and females in the card. So the first card that we turned over is the High Priestess. That is the number two in the majors, and it has a lot of blues. The High Priestess is a psychic woman. So it's telling me I'm instantly receiving things that aren't even in the cards. So they're my tool to like thread a needle, and it's already going. Wow. So your spirits. 
whatever you want to call it, who step forward, who are talking, are already talking. I even have a little chills on my left side. I got it, I got That's it. That's ancestors. <laughs> That's your ancestors okay. coming through. Okay. That's your, they're your ancestors generation, generation, generation. So they are stepping forward for you. They show me a letter J. I'll try to get a name. If I get a name, that would be fantastic. They show me a crescent moon. They tell me that she's very psychic, but she doesn't always rely on it. And then later she says, I should have, I, sh I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. So the left side of the brain, that's the logical one or what's on paper. We tend to stick to that because that's the intellect. But you have a lot of gut feelings or psychic feelings mm -hmm. that you should rely on. Okay. Um, it does show that you are very independent in nature. So even if you're married or in a relationship, there's still a part of you that is a strong, independent woman that nobody will tame. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> He's but that's, about that. <laughs> that's the strong, though. That is that is part of being a high priestess. Okay. I get the high priestess card as well. But I'm seeing like you should rely on it more. It also says that you know a lot of secrets and you can hold a secret. It's a beautiful thing to be a person who when someone confides in you, you don't feel the need to spread gossip or talk. Oh, never. Right, she never. holds the secrets. So it's saying you will find in your life people will trust you and even unravel on you and tell you things and you're thinking, why are you telling me? That has happened so often. That's the high priestess. Okay. Yes, because they intuitively know that you're safe. You're someone who um, has integrity to just hold the secrets. So you can be trusted as a trusted friend. I love the blues. The blues are calm and it means you, you, you're strong, but you won't make conflict. You're not afraid to stand up for yourself, but you're not a troublemaker. Basically, that's the blues. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah, that's Interesting. the... Uh, now, when the moon is in the crescent phase, that's actually a lucky time for you. I'm just hearing that and seeing that in the card, meaning some people it's the full moon. But when it's that slice of crescent, mm -hmm. that's like a lucky time for you. I also see, we'll go to card two. I think they were telling us who Ingrid is or pulling that out, but they are saying she needs to rely on her gut feeling, not always with what is just logical. The middle card is the Knight of Pentacles. Now that doesn't mean because it's a knight and it's a male card, it's not your card. Because we asked, yeah. highest good for you. Uh -huh. And highest good for you, in my interpretation of the night, is Ingrid has plowed the fields and worked hard to get everything that she has. At this time in your life, presently, you could feel as though, I'm only putting energy into things where there will be some sort of even exchange. And it doesn't necessarily have to be monetarily. It could just be in life. Uh -huh. In this point in your life, it's nice to have reciprocal. Right. Sometimes we can be promised things and we plow the fields and plow the fields and then we never receive the harvest. That's not going to happen for you. There will be harvest okay. <laughs> for work, good, good. work that is put out. And that's a good thing. And the last card, which I'm so thrilled about, <laughs> is the star, one of my very favorite cards, if not the favorite card, and this makes a lot of sense. Also with yellows and blues. See, in the middle card had a lot of yellow too. Yeah. So yeah. they're kind of your colors. The star is also a major. Um, it's the Aquarian card or humanitarian concerns. So it means that when we say what's for her highest good, it, you are a healer of sorts. Even if you're not a hands-on nurse, mm -hmm. you still here again, shifting consciousness. You're very positive. And this world can be very positive and very negative, but you still try your best and do see the best of it, not the worst. Some people have that fatalist view. Right, right. And right. you might be the one in the room that says, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's shift the energy here. There's also a lot of beautiful things. And let's focus on them. It does talk about nature and global thinking. You're a global thinker, so you do care what happens to other generations mm -hmm. in the future instead mm -hmm. of, you know, well, that won't matter because we won't be here. I see you do think about what will happen absolutely in the future, so you will do some things if you can to help nature, the future, children, what will happen to the earth, the world, everything. 
Beautiful card. She's naked in the card. Nudity in this card, in the star, is nothing to hide. This is me, like me or not. So it means feeling good in your own skin at this part of your life. Like, you're able to really be who you are, and you won't be as affected by opinions. Okay. I that's, love that. That's like, true. feeling good in our own skin is... Yeah. is Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And plus, you reach a certain age where it's like <laughs> we don't care anymore. <laughs> exactly. I wish I knew all that when I was twenty. <laughs> right, 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 right. So the star does mean hopes fulfilled, positive outcome, healing, yellow and blue again. Now I'm going to throw this at you. That now also what I'm picking up is possibly a trip to a warmer climate, something to do with California. Okay. Is a possibility if you get an offer to do anything, whether it's social or it's business, and it's linked to California or the coast. It's like beautiful vistas. I'm saying. Oh, nice. I'm seeing you may travel there, and there's something very positive linked to that. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Say yes. Yes. <laughs> Remember me. Send for me. <laughs> Send for me. Okay. So ending on the the star is beautiful because it is hopes fulfilled. A lot of it is linked to positive thinking, though, and it has seven stars in it that are represents the chakras. Oh, cool! Very so cool. anything that you are involved in that's healing or shifting consciousness, you will make a difference. You will definitely teach people healing and what's a higher level and positive thinking, rather Wonderful. than do in a world that's a little can be a little heavy. <laughs> it's a little heavy right now. <laughs> But you yeah. could bring a different view. So two of the cards were female, which was was accurate. Now, if I didn't like the, the future card, the last card, what I mean didn't like it, I mean it was an open end. It was a minor card that didn't really apply. We would have chose another card to put on top of it. Okay. And say, help us, let's go further. Yeah. So we always do that. It's not that we want the perfect answer. It's that we want more information. Interesting. When we do it. So um, for a three-card spread, that's really great to start on. And that's what we even do in the class is the three-card spreads. Okay. There is something amazing I have to mention, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the other video, that with a group, we can all be looking at the same three-card spread and we'll talk about one card and everyone at the same time in the group sees one thing in the card that's three-dimensional. So how do you explain that? How do you? When you have a group of 10 or 12 people, I've even had classes with 30, and I hold a card up and we ask a question and everyone sees the same thing, meaning if there's a small bird in that card, everyone's like, it's the bird. The answer's the bird. Wow. Like, how does that happen? Because it, it pertain to the question so it's kind of amazing Fascinating. if you're open-minded yeah wow you do groups too that's what I do groups yes yeah. I've been uh, more reading groups here yeah. like I was mentioning before than going out but I do I do big events I can do big events and um, restaurant clientele I have a big shower coming up that's like a bridal shower in someone's mm -hmm. home and it's very positive and fun and we'll just do shorter readings for them yeah and then you have to, it's an hourly rate instead of individual. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's business. You can adjust it to whatever the need is. Right, right, right. You know. Oh, well, this was perfect. Perfect. I'm so looking forward to your class starting Yay. next Wednesday. I can't wait. I'll get my cards. This was another beautiful reading. I was, I was nervous. It was like, like. And I'm nervous because we're public on camera. <laughs> But there's not to be nervous about. No, no. Especially when that ice cube shot across the How kitchen floor. Okay, so say what happened. So Ingrid got here and we began to set up, and I heard a pop and a noise, and I went upstairs, and an ice cube, a whole ice cube shot out of the ice maker <laughs> across the floor. So she did bring somebody with her today, and uh, it was pretty fun to see that. And I kept thinking, you know, as a psychic, you want to connect the dots sometimes. Yeah. Some, what does it mean? Some things are coincidence and yeah. some things really are a sign. I'm like, hmm, does she know anyone in Iceland? <laughs> That's where my mind was That's thinking. Funny. It's an ice cube. So it's open for interpretation. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I don't know. It was something in somebody here. Huh. And I think maybe the J name who uh it was my dad, John okay. or Jack. 
Okay, because yeah, I, I, mean, I saw that as the J is next to her as a pillar, meaning the rock, a pillar. So even if they're on the other side, it's saying they're still on her left side, like they're here. And as soon as we saw that card, I did have chills, which it is my sign. Okay. That somebody was stepping that's, that's, in or that's stepping forward. That stepped in with somebody else who wasn't, you know, who was a psychic, but she wasn't, I wasn't interviewing her for that. She it just was for something else. And she kept looking over my shoulder. She could see like, I had to ask her, like, after we were done, like, who were you seeing? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I love yeah. when so that he's, happens. He's around. He's it's, around. Yeah, yeah, well, he's there, and he's on your left side. Okay. Now, in a reading, if she would ask more <coughs> questions about that, we can go further into any area the person wants to know. I just go further. I don't always just say everything I get. I want them to be happy with the reading. So I'll say, where do you want to go with this reading? Yeah. And if not, then I just do it my way. But people come with specific questions for the most part. Right, right, right. I'm sure they do. And then they wait till the predictions come out, and then they come back. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Repeat customers. Yes. That's good. That's good. So get her book. It's so fascinating. The Psychic Next Door by Deborah Collier. Or Collier. Or I like, like. yeah. Deborah Collier. <laughs> Ooh, we may change that. <laughs> So thank you so much for thank joining you, me. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. And I'll see you next Wednesday for the class. Yay! Yay. Excited. Thanks for joining us on Living thank It you. Up, Making Life Juicy.